Welcome to the video on memory aids. The learning goals for this video are to learn the specifics around what a memory aid is, understand under what circumstances a person may warrant a memory aid, to be able to state what can and cannot be contained on a memory aid, and to gain awareness of the process and timelines involved in the approval and creation of a memory aid. When thinking about a memory aid, also known as a cue sheet, Let's use the iceberg analogy. In essence, a helpful, simple, key piece of information, which we call a retrieval cue, is represented by the tip of the iceberg above the waterline, if you will. These cues are what you may put on a memory aid. We will be examining what this may look like later in this video. Everything that you need to know about a retrieval cue, which could be explaining a key concept or theory, working out a solution, or providing full definitions, to mention a few, is located below the water and represents information stored in your long-term memory. For a more concrete example, when you see the word car or see a picture of a car, what could you share about it if asked? Chances are that you're able to describe its typical features. It may have two or four doors, be a convertible or hatchback, have four wheels, and so on. You can explain its general purpose, its use to move people, and items from point A to B. You can even argue some of the pros and cons of having one. They're convenient, foster independence, but they're very expensive to maintain and ensure. The key word here, the Q, was car. It was up to you to retrieve the specifics from your memory. A memory aid is just that. It's a tool created whereby certain unique words, pictures, acronyms, mnemonics, diagrams, mind maps are written or typed on a piece of paper to assist you with recalling the details from your long-term memory. Let's take a look at the circumstances in which a student may warrant a memory aid. A student who requires a memory aid must present documentation from a qualified professional which supports the need for this aid to accessibility services. The purpose of the memory aid is to cue information that the student has studied but may have difficulty recalling due to diagnosed cognitive processing deficits associated with memory and recall. It helps to prompt the student's memory to provide the answer. It gives the student equal opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge in a testing situation by lessening the impact of their disability. It is not intended to reduce academic requirements or alter the standards by which academic performance is assessed, nor is it a substitute for not studying. A proper cue sheet will not be useful to the student unless the student knows and understands how to use the information that it refers to. Bottom line, if the student doesn't understand the course material, the cue sheet will not help the student. It's important to highlight the decision as to whether you qualify for this type of rare accommodation is determined by your documentation from a qualified professional in consultation with your consultant at Accessibility Services. If it is determined that this is an appropriate accommodation for you, instructors will be receiving a notification of a memory aid accommodation on their faculty notification letter sent by Accessibility Services. The parameters for the creation of a memory aid. A memory aid must be completed on an eight and a half inch by 11 inch piece of paper. Your cues will be written and or drawn on one side of the paper only. It can be handwritten or typed in a 10 to 12 point font, but nothing smaller. You must have your student number and course code on it and the items on there must only make sense to you. It must be written in the language that the course is being taught in. It should only contain the information that you cannot recall without it. Examples of what this may look like will be discussed later in this video. What a memory aid should not include. Complete terms and their definitions. In some cases, a key descriptive word or picture may be allowed to assist with a definition if it isn't deemed an essential learning outcome for the test. 
A memory aid is never to be used in replace of studying. It cannot contain facts or information that could alter the academic expectations of the course. As well, it cannot include any information that is to be remembered as part of an essential learning outcome. Those aspects which are key or essential learning outcomes of the course will be determined by your professor. The approval process. If a memory aid accommodation has been deemed appropriate and is approved by the accommodation consultant, then when scheduling your classroom and testing accommodations through the Accessibility Services website, be sure to check off memory aid as an accommodation for all applicable tests and exams. It's important to create your memory aid well in advance of the test. It must be submitted to your professor at least 10 business days prior to your actual test. This will give them ample time to review it. Set up a follow-up appointment to meet with your professor for as soon as possible to get feedback on your memory aid. Your professor will determine whether the memory aid compromises academic integrity in any way. If they feel that an item or items on the aid provides a complete answer versus a cue, the professor will ask you to remove it. Also, if your professor feels that the information contained on your aid is an essential learning outcome for this particular test and for this course, this means that they expect you, the student, to be able to recall this information without the support of a memory aid, and consequently, they will ask you to remove it. You must revise your cue sheet and resubmit it to your professor typically within three business days to comply with the requested changes. This is the final submission typically and is ideally completed seven days prior to the actual test. The professor will, in most circumstances, submit your memory aid with their test to the Accessibility Services Exam Center. When you finish writing your test, the memory aid will remain with your test. Let's take a look at some examples of cues that may be permitted on your sheet. I say potentially because as mentioned previously, it's important to check with your professor first to be clear on what they will permit. Your memory joggers or retrieval cues must be unique and only make sense to you. You may use keywords, pictures, phrases, acrostics, acronyms. You may come up with a humorous sentence whereby the first letter of each word would represent the beginning sound and cue the word that you are trying to recall from your memory. Note that you are not typically permitted to write full definitions on your sheet. The exception to allowing full definitions may be if the essential learning outcome for your assessment doesn't hinge on your memorized knowledge of the definitions. In this case, the testing questions may be focusing on analysis and application instead. Let's take a closer look at essential learning outcomes as they pertain to a memory aid. Essential learning outcomes are broad and or specific learning goals that students are supposed to know and or demonstrate. Professors set these outcomes and they're found on your syllabus. An example, a human anatomy course. One of the learning objectives or outcomes is to identify and describe the major structures of the human body. Therefore, you must be able to memorize the names of each structure or come up with a symbol or nonsensical mnemonic that will cue your brain to remember the specific terminology. However, if being asked to explain how organ systems function and interrelate, you may be able to label a diagram on your memory aid. Therefore, what is and isn't permitted on a memory aid is based on essential learning outcomes when you're being assessed. Consequently, each test may have different essential learning outcomes. Let's look at a few more examples of items that may be permitted on a memory aid sheet. A simple mind map that shows relationships between concepts using keywords or pictures only. You may use color and or shapes for lines, arrows, and bubbles. A flowchart with basic terms to demonstrate the whole picture or whole concept as it relates to its parts. Used to cue related associations of the parts to the whole. 
First letter acronyms, for example, ROYGBIV, stands for the visible colors of the light spectrum. Note that you have to recall from memory what each letter stands for. A graph. Note that you must explain the relationship between lines, variables, etc. You may be permitted to use symbols, images, names, dates. Tips for your memory aid. Because space is at a premium, be sure to choose cues for only the material you have difficulty retrieving from memory. You may want to use color. Organize your content in a logical, orderly way that makes sense to you. Make sure that it's legible and user-friendly. So to recap, summary points. You must have professional documentation demonstrating need. You must meet with your consultant to ensure that this accommodation is warranted. You must submit your memory aid at least 10 business days prior to your test. If the information on your memory aid is deemed an essential learning outcome for the course, it will be removed. You must revise and resubmit for final approval seven business days prior to your test. It's to be used to cue your memory, not a replacement for studying. It should only make sense to you if done correctly. It must be approved by your professor. It is done on an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper on one side only in the language that the course is instructed in. The professor usually keeps your aid and submits it with the exam to accessibility services. For further information on memory aid policy, please visit the resources section below this video. If you need further assistance, please contact accessibility services to make an appointment.